Okay. All right, let's see if everything is working correctly. So that if I record this, there's no problems with it. Okay, can you hear me okay? If I use my normal outside voice, well not outside voice, but talking at things voice. Okay. All right, so. Uh... We're going to run through. My mod list. And the mods that I have. And. I mean I'm almost level 30 with this current character. And I haven't really had any huge issues. I did have to. Well not have to. But I did remove. Um, forgotten dungeons here. I got rid of that one. Just because they weren't particularly good quality mods um oh not mods they weren't particularly good quality dungeons forgive me i am very sleepy i'm very tired i'm half asleep but this is going to be the mod list so if you're watching this after the fact awesome um if you are here and you have any questions while i'm running through it feel free to ask them because somebody else that watches them later will probably ask the same thing or maybe now I've got a few to update here. I'm not too worried about them right this second. Um, I am going to quickly search for this. Because I'm going to trim this down into a highlight anyway. So, if you are watching it later, then you won't see this bit. Uh... Unofficial... Uh, Elven Hunter? Yeah, cool. This is the one that I need because this is what's free in uh, the, um, in the Creation Club at the moment. Read the bounty note in the Falkreath barracks. Cool. Now. If you are here at the moment, you're seeing this live. It might seem a little bit disjointed. Part of it is because I want to sort of clip it and edit it and highlight it and change a few things, move it around. We're probably going to be here for a little bit. I'm not going to go too in-depth on the specifics of the mods. Um... I'll brush over a few bits and pieces that I feel you would need to know if you copied this mod list exactly as it is. Um, but yeah, we'll um, we'll see what happens. Give me just one second. Okay, cool. Hello, Sprout. Thank you for your help this, uh, this, this evening, this afternoon. have a few random favorites and stuff that I did want to try out, but I don't want to mess with this particular mod list just yet, because I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm leaving it as is. 
I will jump in and... Like I said, I'll go in depth about a couple of different mods. It is going to be disjointed. Everything I'm saying right now might not even be in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is run through the mod list. Um, just going to... Wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why is that? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So I'm going to run through them quickly, relatively quickly, and I'm going to run through them silently so I can clip this into a short highlight. I'm not going to talk through it, but once I get down to the end, then I'll go all the way back up to the top and I'll start running through them a little bit more in depth, but I'm just going to scroll through them one at a time just with no talking and I'll be back. Okay. All right. So, I'll run through the load order proper now. You know what? I noticed something that is not where it should be, and that's annoying. I'm pretty sure I deleted this one and reinstalled it, and then moved it. This one should be up here with the menus and stuff. It should be alright to go there. Hey, welcome back. Well, I'm about to run through it. I'm just going to do a quick scroll through it um, with no talking so that I can clip it out and just have it as a silent mod list so you can go back and refer to the actual order if you want to 
see what's there in a relatively quick scroll without having to look up the text version, which I will be putting up as well somewhere else. But I'm going to have a quick scroll through it. And then once I get to the bottom, I'll come back, but I'm not going to talk while I scroll through it. So I will do this now and I will talk to you in just a minute. But if you weren't here before, um, basically when I'm going to run through this list, I'm going to run through it a little bit more with sort of tips about load orders and, and things like that to give you a bit more of an idea of it. I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a professional load order builder or anything like that. I'm not an expert. Um, but after spending over a month of <laughs> full days with it, um, I learned a thing or two. So hopefully I'll be able to help you out. But yeah, so I'm going to run through this now. And I'll be back once I get to the bottom of the list. And that's it. That's the list. 150 mods. Uh, and they all work together so far. It still crashes occasionally. But so does Skyrim without mods. Um, but yeah. So I'll run through it. If you have any questions at all, Kawaii, then let me know now. Because I'm going to cut this next bit out into a highlight because I, I've got a couple of other people um, that would be interested in a mod list. And if anybody happens to come across this in the world later, then it might be able to help them out too. But hopefully it'll be able to help you fix whatever's going on with yours, or at least point you in the right direction. Uh, this is going <laughs> to... It's going to be a little bit to run through, but we'll get there. Okay. Oh, and if you have to go at any point, or if you miss any of it, that's cool. Like I said, it's going to be clipped. It'll be a highlight, so you can always come back here later or tomorrow or whenever and just watch through it. Alright. So, first thing... Unofficial Skyrim patch. Uh, Skyrim Special Edition patch. People swear by it. People live by it. People say that this is a necessity. Uh, every now and then you'll come across a mod or something that'll say it doesn't work with this patch, but probably avoid that mod from my experience because usually they're uh, very demanding. They want something very specific. So... If it says doesn't work with the unofficial s patch or USSEP, try to see if you can uh, go without it. 
Um, just because a lot of mods need this to work. So more mods need this to work than ones that need to avoid it. But a lot of mods don't care either way. These are the Creation Club patches that I've got. This just stops the Creation Club stuff from happening instantly. Well, most of the most of the patches do. Uh, stops the Creation Club stuff from happening instantly. Um, so you don't have a career running up to you right at the start or a, a pop-up saying, hey, this quest is ready, go and do this thing. Um, but this is mostly just for the, the Creation Club stuff that I've picked up for free. I haven't bought any of it. Um, it's all either been for free or the original 100 points that I had. I think I got Rare Curios with it. I feel like I got Rare Curios with it. Or it could have been Arcane Accessories. One of these was free and one wasn't. But if you don't have anything from the Creation Club, or if you don't care about getting the quest for the Creation Club stuff straight away, don't worry about these. Uh, obviously, they take up mod slots. So you can always free up a bit of mod space there. Um, cutting room floor. Cool mod. You'll see here on the on the right hand side there, it's got the load order. It says place near the top of your list, somewhere underneath the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. So a lot of mods will tell you where to put it in the load order. Most of them are most of them that talk about where to put them in the load order are correct. But again, you've kind of got to play it by ear. You've got to know the different mod authors, whether or not they make, you know, whether whether or not the community is uh, happy with them, that sort of thing. So, you have a lot of mod authors out there that are pretty well known. Mod authors like Arthmore, uh, Enisation, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm going to butcher some of these names. Um, uh, my memory is failing me. There's a there's a fair few of them, a fair few different mod authors that are really well known. Um, Cutting room floor is really good. Takes a lot of NPCs. It's pretty self-explanatory if you if you read on the right there. Takes a lot of NPCs and, and quests and buildings and stuff that were never implemented into the game. They were cut at the last minute. Takes them, cleans them up a little bit, and puts them into the world. So it makes Skyrim just a little bit more Skyrim. Ars Metallica. A cool blacksmithing overhaul. Um, make, lets you make archers, uh, arrows out of various materials and, and that sort of stuff, feathers, etc. Um, you can make lockpicks, you can smelt down ore as you level up, all that sort of thing. Um, just makes blacksmithing better overall. It's a good blacksmithing mod. You'll find, uh, while I have 150 mods in the mod list, a lot of my mods are patches to make things work together. So, I'm not just downloading a mod, I'm looking for patches for it as well. And that's of the 150 mods I've got here, there's probably only, you know, half of that that are actually mods and the other half are patches. Green Thumb. This one's only necessary if you have Rare Curios. If you don't have Rare Curios, don't download this. Rare Curios is from the Creation Club. It's the this one that adds a whole bunch of new ingredients that the Khajiit sell. Um, a lot of really cool ingredients, but yeah. Um, but it lets you plant a lot of things that you couldn't plant before in your crop plots. This is a cool mod. Um, fonts of Cleansing. I don't know if you saw me going and, and taking the soul gems that had the wrong uh, the wrong level or the wrong size of soul in them. But it basically you can put them in there, they'll clean it out, it'll be fresh, and they'll have They'll have the soul, the, the soul gems being blank again. So you're not going to have a grand soul gem with a petty soul in it. You just throw them in here and they'll be cleaned out. Sometimes you've got to put them in there a couple of times. Especially if you're putting multiple things in. If you're sort of dumping a heap of soul gems in there. Some of them don't cleanse the first time around. Just take them out put it back in again. Usually they're good. It takes enchantments off things as well. So I use uh, an overhaul that I'll talk about a bit more later on. Called Moro Loot Ultimate. And it makes the, the higher end stuff a lot rarer. So stuff like Daedric, stuff like Ebony, that sort of thing. You can enchant it knowing that you can then take that really rare weapon or really rare piece of armor to this font of cleansing and then put it into it to be able to enchant it again. So if you, as you level up your enchanting or get better soul gems and stuff, you can enchant it again and again and again. Um, you just have to clean it, basically. Uh, it does the same thing for stolen goods. Stolen goods, it'll it'll clean them, make them not stolen anymore. Um, it does a lot of a lot of different little bits and pieces. If you think of anything that has a base version, 
you know, an empty sole gem, a blank set of boots, uh, a simple, you know, circlet or ring or whatever. If you want to re return it back to that original state, you use this. So you can clean things. Uh, load screen replacer, just because it's nice. It's nice to have something different to look at. It's nice to have different load screens. Um, yeah, just just something different, something nice. It's not a necessity. You don't need this one. It just makes it so your load screens are cool pictures. And sometimes they have some cool um, little sentences down there. It's 99% law friendly. Um, there are a couple in there that are, are good for a chuckle. But being a load screen and not actually really affecting the game, they're not too bad. Um, you know, there was one in there and it showed uh, somebody that on PC who obviously had a Battletoad um, skin or race mod or so, of some sort and they were standing in the middle of Solitude as a Battletoad and that was their screenshot and it said um, the text down the bottom that normally gives you hints and tips says uh, basically Battletoads are not native to Skyrim nor to any of uh, nor are they in Elder Scrolls uh, in the Elder Scrolls universe at all um, it goes on a little bit but it's it's just a funny little thing most of the load screens are legitimate though they talk about the world they talk about the races they uh, a lot of them delve into the lore a bit it's um it's pretty cool to have just these nice little pop-ups uh even better quest objectives so these are a couple of different ones um these these next ones all work together so even better quest objectives is just it rewords some of your quest objectives for the base game Rather than saying, oh, go and find such and such, and then not giving you a reason, or not a reason, but a, like a more of a detail to it. It just, it makes it so that it's a little bit more direct. Go and do this at this place, or go and meet this person with this item, or whatever. And then because I've got cutting room floor, this is a patch to make even better quest objectives and cutting room floor work together. Um, Radiant quest marker. And then it's got EBQO, which is even better quest objective. So again, this is the version to make it work with that. And Radiant Quest Marker just just marks Radiant Quests. So quests that are repeatable sort of quests, quests that are just random for out in the world, um, that aren't part of a storyline or aren't just as like a miscellaneous thing. They are just a repeatable thing. Um, you know, your old... Go and go and kill this vampire or go and save this person or whatever it just marks it and says this is radiant so you can go oh, okay that's not that important rather than thinking it's part of a quest line um, and then radiant quest mark uh, uh, cutting room floor patch so again it's just to make it work with cutting room floor makes everything working together uh, smoothly so three of these are really are, are kind of like patches. Um, Sky HUD. So that's my heads up display. My HUD. Um, this is the dissonance preset. And it is... Uh, it's just a nicer sort of layout. It's one that I like. It was suggested to me. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. Keeps, keeps your, your HUD a little bit cleaner. 60 frames menus, so 60 FPS menus, just makes your, your menus run smoother and faster. Makes your um, your main menu and your menus in game, makes them open up quicker, smoother, they run a little bit better. Um, I haven't found any slowdown or any issues with it. And as you can see there again, load this mod as high up in the load order as possible to lower the chance of conflict. So you gotta remember to put mods that are, that affect certain things higher or lower um, in the game. So this this 60 frames menu takes all of the base game menus and puts them all to be a certain way. If you put it under something else that changes the menus or adds extra menus or something, then you it'll take what is the default menus and it'll sort of override them and it can cause problems. That's a, an example that might be fairly specific, but a lot of mods will do those sorts of things. You have to sort of play a bit of pick up sticks with them. Uh, spells clean. Spells clean is just so that, um, yeah, spell, spells clean is to make the 
some of the mods that I've got have um, things that you would edit in them. So they have like edit menus. Um, this makes those particular spells and powers go away. So there might be a spell for, you know, uh, the combat mod that I've got called Fatality. There's a, there's a spell for that. And you can go in there and you can change certain settings and make it harder or easier or turn certain certain settings within it on or off, uh, certain mechanics on or off. And you don't want to have that sitting in your spells list all the time because you sort of... It's, it's, it's not as immersive and you can always add more things to that list. Um, manually. So it'll recognize some of them but you can add things to the list manually as well. Crafting recategorize. This is just personal preference. You don't have to do this. Uh, if you want to leave things as um, dwarven, elven, orcish, steel, iron, that sort of thing, cool. I did this because of the amount of weapons and bits and pieces that were added to the game with some of my other mods. So I wanted to categorize them as this is all the maces. This is all the weapons that are mace type. This is all the weapons that are sword type. So uh, uh, you have a, sh uh, a sword, if you're not talking great swords, just your one-handed sword. It'll have swords, and it'll have uh, short swords, and it'll have um, short spears. Um, and then like your great swords will have long spears, it'll have glaives, it'll have um, tridents. Oh, I think tridents might be axes. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but there's a lot of different... Um, ways to categorize it that's personal preference better intimidation just makes it so that your intimidation options in the game are more aggressive they're not sort of like i don't think you should be doing that it's more sort of um i'm gonna pull your eyeballs out which is far more <laughs> um intimidating font overhaul again not necessary just makes the font look different you can see it there now. Your Skyrim font might look be a little, might look a little bit different. Um, you know, it is what it is. Again, personal preference, up to you. Um, but you, a lot of these you'll see that are in sort of categories. So there's patches that you are stuck up the top. These ones are like your sort of big overhauling type things um, that affect specific parts of the game. Um, and then you get into like menu stuff. So the load screen replacer, quest objectives, reword things, the HUD, the the way that things come up, or your or your sort of your menu changes and your little like text changes and and things like that, your font changes, updates, whatever. Um, but now we get into uh, a couple of sort of quest updates. So these are alternate dialogue additions to quests that do change the outcome of quests. Um, I've got these up here. I don't remember why I've got them up here. Some of these things in this load order, because they were, again, this is something that I worked on for over a month. There are certain parts of it that I know somewhere, somewhere online or somewhere through, you know, some Reddit post somewhere, I found out to put these in a certain spot on the list. And these are Arthmore's quest updates. The Path on Axe Dilemma and Gilda Green re Regrown. Um, Put them near the top if you use these. A lot of other quest mods go right down the bottom. Then you get into items added to the world. Just basic craftable items. Um, mostly cra mostly craftable items. Uh, backpacks. So the backpacks are simple. You, NPCs don't run around with backpacks on. You make them. Um, but then you've got cloaks of Skyrim. So NPCs do have cloaks. So guards will have cloaks, some bandits will have cloaks, some forsworn, you know, random NPCs around the world uh, will have cloaks. Some characters will have specific cloaks. And it also adds uh, a whole bunch of unique cloaks from around the world that are enchanted with different things too, which is really cool. So you can find, like, I'm currently wearing uh, the cloak of Red Eagle. Uh, and it gives me a bonus to one-handed weapon damage. Very cool. Random find in a dungeon, or in his dungeon. Um, but there's a lot of cloaks out there in the world. And the cloaks look nice. They just look cool. They're also another thing to enchant too. So you can enchant basic cloaks when you craft them. Um, they work kind of like a, a ring. 
I guess. I think I'm pretty sure it's the same enchantments as rings, if I remember correctly. Same with face masks. So face masks of Skyrim. Bandits will wear brown face masks. No one else will really wear face masks, but you can craft them as well. So you can craft them in all sorts of different colors. And again, they're just one more thing to enchant for you. Um, multiple rings with so many different enchantments in the world. And because of the increase in difficulty that is in place, um, you can wear multiple rings. You can't wear two of the same ring. So if you've got a, a, a silver ring, a silver ruby ring, a basic silver ring with a ruby in it, you can't wear two silver ruby rings. But you can wear a silver emerald ring and a silver amethyst ring. So you can't double up, but you can wear multiple rings. If you know what I mean. It helps you with enchantments and stuff. I haven't got into it too much in my playthrough yet, but I will once my enchanting's up. Um, eye crime, realistic penalties. And again, you'll notice that some of these are just menu changes, just little little updates to the menus and stuff. You know, your, your information in the background rather than big questing type things or whatever. Um, high crime just makes it so that if you get busted as a criminal, you get into big trouble. Um, you know, if you... Oops, sorry about that. Um, so you basically don't want to get busted as a criminal. If you get done um, and you get caught, then you will get into a lot of trouble you will have big fines, uh, and if you go to jail, you'll be going to jail for more than just a week. You'll be going to jail for up to a year, and the game has to load that 365 days. So if you're waiting seven days, it can be a long load because it loads the world for seven days. But if you load for 365 days, it's a very long load. So it's the sort of load that if you really mess up and manage to go to jail after messing up that badly you will either have to break out or if you decide to serve your sentence, go and make yourself a sandwich, um, stretch your legs, you know, take a break for a few minutes because it's going to load for a while. Basically, don't commit crimes and if you're going to get caught. Make sure you don't get caught. Archery tweaks just makes archery a bit better. Makes NPCs stop dodging arrows. Um, makes bows a little bit better. Uh, this is the Rare Curios patch, so it makes the Rare Curios arrows better. Because um, they add new bolts and new types of arrows and things with their alchemy ingredients that you can make. Again, patches, patches, patches. Patches are so important. Because some of these mods just won't work. Your game will just crash. If they, if they try and play without a patch and there's two mods that conflict, it won't work. They just won't play. Uh, standing stones, um, that just changes the way standing stones work, so it changes the powers and abilities. It doesn't really change where they are in the world, it just changes what they do. So again, it's more menu-based, it's more system-based rather than world-based. So the world-based stuff, the stuff that actually changes the map, is way further down. Perk points and more gold for bounties. Um, because I'm using Ordinator, which is a perk overhaul mod, um, overhauls all your skill trees it also has a lot more perks and a lot more perks that you can put multiple points into so extra perk points um, are important to have <clears throat> and I didn't want it to be broken I didn't want it to be sort of every time you level up you get five perk points um, it's done so that basically if you do a special bounty so 300 gold for one perk point if you kill a bandit you know, giants, 500 gold and one perk point. Dragons, 1,000 gold and two perk points through those bounties. So with that, that can be through, um, you know, the, the I can't remember his name. The offsider to the Jarl in Whiterun will tell you to go and kill certain people or whatever. Um, if you do it through him or if you do it through the bounty board that I've got, that is another, you would have seen me go up to it a couple of times if you've, seen it at all it's a bounty board in every main capital city the bounties on that if you do a bandit kill a bandit kill a giant kill a dragon whatever same deal they all fit together um again perk points at skill levels 50 75 and 100 so whenever your skill reaches 50 75 or 100 
you'll get a bonus perk point. So if your blacksmithing hits level 50, have a free perk point. You don't have to level up for it, it's just there. Um, and then 20% more perk points. So every five levels that you earn, on your fifth level, you'll get two perk points instead of one. Um, so it's just like an extra bonus every five levels. It's not on level five, it's on level six. So it's every five levels that you earn. So level six is the fifth level that you've earned, which confused me a little bit at the start, but it works. Um, but all these together help you fill out your perks uh, to, you know, actually make some of those skill trees in Ordinator work a lot better. Now we're getting into things that sort of add a bit more to the world. So mysticism, it adds over 200 new spells to the world. Um, it tweaks how some of the uh, spells work, tweaks who sells them, changes some scrolls around. It basically just adds more spells. Adds more spells. Spells are more exciting. More things to do. Cool, cool, cool. Apocalypse, same thing. Adds more spells. Um, it adds a lot of spells to the game that are really interesting. Um, spells, scrolls, staves, all that sort of stuff, they're all throughout the world, scattered about the place. Morrowind Miscellanea. Now, Morrowind Miscellanea does a lot of different things. Um, I'll just read it verbatim. Uh, this mod reprices and redistributes among merchants, armor, weapon, and a vast majority of the miscellaneous items in the game, radically changes alchemy effects and ingredients while slightly tweaking bar barter settings to make the value of items both more believable and more in line with the experience in other games. Um, so it rebalances things to be more like Morrowind. Again, I, I never played Morrowind, but it a lot of these changes sounded really cool. So it allows you to craft and purchase basic crossbows and bolts at any blacksmith so you don't have to join the dawn guard you can just learn to make steel stuff and make basic crossbows um, you can't make the advanced ones or anything like that but you can make simple steel crossbows uh, rebalances potion effects making strong ingredients far more effective so things like giant's toes um, vampire dust you know rare ingredients they're going to be worth a lot more they'll be worth you know 40 gold instead of two and they they make your potions a lot better uh, materials, consumables, and ingredients are worth more. Um, but it also means that they can drop wherever. Some of the things that this mentions are counteracted by other mods. So it's... All of these do work together, but some of these things that it adds, other mods will take away. But they're all made to work together. So it's not, it's not that it's broken, it's made to be like this. Um, mod customizes merchants... Uh, Artifacts are worth far more gold. Lots of just... It just does lots of stuff. Just does lots of cool things. Lots of cool things. Um, yeah. Thematic loot. It's pretty simple, this one. You're not going to find... Um, you know, a dwarven sword... In a... a I'm trying to think of any other dungeon except a Dwarven dungeon, and that's the only thing that's in my head right now. So you're not going to find, like, an ancient Nord sword in a Dwemer dungeon. You know, you're going to find, specifically, in a, in a Dwemer dungeon, you'll find Dwemer loot. In an ancient Nord dungeon, you'll find ancient Nord loot. Um, yeah, in, in different, different places, different dungeons, different stuff, you'll find specific... Um, Specific loot that actually makes sense in the world. So Dwemer, Falma, Warlock, Draugr, uh, Giant Chests, all that sort of thing. They, they make specific loot for those chests. Very staccato. I'm trying to think of the specific words to use. Basically, it's good. It makes it makes things make more sense. This is Moro Loot Ultimate. Moro Loot Ultimate is, is pretty cool. Moro Loot Ultimate is my main overhaul mod, I guess. Uh, a lot of this mod list is built around Moro Loot Ultimate. It locks... Um, certain dungeons to be certain levels. So if you go into the wrong place and you're underleveled for it, you will probably get your face smashed in. Um, and if you're super overleveled for something, uh, it'll be a lot smoother of a run. It also adds a lot of other artifacts to the game. So a lot of 
basic day, sort of Daedric level artifacts, or not Daedric, but like your, your quest specific stuff, your, your named items, your unique items. It adds a lot of a lot more artifacts like that, uh, just found throughout the world. It adds Ancient Nord hero weapons. Uh, it adds Ancient Nord armor sets, things like that. Um, it also alters the stats of Ebony. Ebony is way stronger. Uh, it's also way rare, way rarer. So it's really rare to get Ebony and you can only make it at certain forges. Um, it does a lot. It's worth having a read. There are a couple of versions of this in the Xbox store. This is MLU full version, 84.23 megabytes. Or I think this is one that needs a patch so that megabyte amount might be wrong, but you can see the thumbnail there. You can see the name. There are different versions of it. This is the one that I'm using because it's the most up-to-date and the most complete. This is a thematic loot patch for Moro Loot Ultimate. Simple. Just makes it so that you have thematic loot in Moro Loot. There's going to be a lot of patches. Moro and Miscellanea Overhaul for Moro Loot Ultimate patch. That's another patch. Um, and you can see here it shows the load order. So sometimes you need to sort of fill the gaps yourself. But it is it is a load order specifically to run the mods together. Um, you want to keep a lot of these sorts of mods clustered in groups. You don't just want to install them and then just leave them and sort of go, oh yeah, that's fine, they're in there somewhere because they'll they'll have a problem. Um, but yeah, these patches are for that. And it says there you've got to put Morrow Loot, um, Morrow Wind Miscellanea patch in front of Ordinator because Ordinator, which is my perk overhaul mod, would normally, if you don't have this, specifically saying put it ahead of Ordinator, I would normally put Ordinator up here with these guys because they add more magic spells and so does Ordinator in a way. Um, Ordinator changes all your perks, makes perks more exciting because they just make some of the skill trees more exciting. Um, archery tweaks are the one that we had before. This is an Ordinator patch to make the new Ordinator arrows work with that Archery tweaks mod. Otherwise... There'll be certain arrows that just don't behave the same way. Mysticism, again, another Ordinator patch. Apocalypse, another Ordinator patch. A lot of these become patches further down. Freshly ground means you can use the mills. You can grind up things like wheat, and you can grind up bones, you can grind up gems, you can grind up uh, soul gems. Lots of different things you can grind up. You can make um, fire salts and void salts and things like that. Um... It also lets you make vampire potions and things. Um, yeah, so they're all they're all usable. That makes it work with Ordinator. It shows you the correct load order for it. So while it shows these three, Ordinator, then Freshly Ground, then Freshly Ground Ordinator, it's you you know that there's certain things that have to go before Ordinator. You know there's certain things that have to go after it. So some of these patches. You know, compatibility patch, Apocalypse, Ordinator. That doesn't say load order there, but usually you can trust that the order that they list the mods in is the load order, if they don't specifically come out and say it. Um, heavy Armory adds a lot of new weapons. Over 100 new weapons. See, load, or, uh, load order and compatibility. Heavy Armory may conflict with other mods that add weapons to the game through leveled lists. So leveled lists is another important thing. Leveled lists is basically when the game looks at your character and goes, okay, you know, you're level 30. We need to, in this dungeon, we need to fill it with level 30 bandits. Then it'll look at what the template for those level 30 bandits is, or are, and it'll go, okay, what's, what, what's available for a level 30 bandit? We could put some steel armor on them, we could put this on them, we could put that on them. Leveled lists can be altered by a lot of different mods. Heavy Armory adds weapons to the level list. So they have this pool of weapons for a level 30 bandit to choose from. And Heavy Armory adds new weapons to that pool or to those pools. So it'll suddenly have more or less, but usually it's it's adding things to it. And then Summer Mist is a lot of new enchantments. And then you have a patch here that makes Heavy Armory and Summer Mist work together. So the new weapons added by Heavy Armory sometimes spawn with the new enchantments from summer mist but yeah I, and i know i've said this a million times already but patches 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 find your patches 
once you have your load order down pat, if things still aren't working, you either have a direct clash between mods or you're missing a patch, which would fix a direct clash anyway. Um, some mods just won't work together because they alter the same thing. But other times you just need a patch and they'll work fine. Um, Morrowind Ultimate Heavy Armory patch. This makes the Morrowind Ultimate weapons and, and overhaul work with those Heavy Armory weapons. Uh, makes the Summer Mist stuff work with it. Uh, makes Ars Metallica, so the Blacksmith one, work with Morrowind Ultimate. Uh, this is a Summer Mist patch for the font. So that cleansing font. The, the That you would clear all the enchantments and your soul gems and stuff. Makes it so that it recognises those new Summer Mist enchantments. Otherwise it's not going to know what they are. It's not going to know to clear them. Royal Armoury. Royal Armoury is an interesting one. This is optional. Um, Royal Armoury makes it so that you have... Um, a lot of like the important characters, the unique characters in Skyrim makes it so that they have unique weapons that are just nicer. Um, they're just, they're cool swords, cool weapons. Um, just makes it more exciting, really. Um, but that's, that's the main overhaul for like items and gear and, and that sort of stuff. And then we get into actual combat stuff. Um, and, and then down into NPCs and, and things like that. So Fatality is a combat mod. Just adds a lot of cool features to combat itself. Uh, that's why my fights usually last for about two and a half seconds. And then there's a winner. And half the time it's not me. Uh, damage plugin. It just changes the way that Fatality works. So it revamps the damage. Um, novice is super easy. Super easy mode. Like, disgustingly easy mode. Um, but then it's got other versions here. So, Apprentice, you're doing the same damage as the enemy. Adept, you're doing the same damage as the enemy, but you're both doing more. So, Apprentice, you're both doing two times damage. You and the, you and the Bandit are doing two times damage. Adept, you're both doing three times damage. Expert, you're both doing four times damage. It just makes fighting happen faster for those three difficulties. So you can use Apprentice or you can use Adept or Expert and it's a it's a fair fight no matter what of those three but Expert happens a lot faster. So Expert, the fights will be over and done with in one or two hits. Whereas Apprentice, it might take five or six hits. Uh, then it gets to Master if you're really uh, a masochist. If you really hate yourself and you want to do a difficulty that's just super tough um, then it's they do four times damage and you do two times damage. And then legendary is you do normal damage and um, they're doing six times damage. So they will just end you by looking at you almost. But again, load order. Even though the plugin is meant to go with fatality, it works with any other combat mod of your choice as long as it's below it. Um, compatible with everything except other damage plugins uh, that alter the same modifiers. So it's it's that's a pretty good explanation for load orders. You know, whichever one's at the bottom will win if they alter the same thing, but if they clash. Um, so you have ones that'll overwrite each other, and that's usually pretty harmless, but you'll just have a mod that doesn't work for some reason. And then you'll have ones that'll directly clash, and they're the ones that'll crash a game. Usually they're like lighting mods, graphical overhauls. Um, realistic Water 2, if you're not careful, will, will crash a game. So if you've got Realistic Water 2, it'll... it'll uh, mess you up sometimes um, that's another little patch for it so it's just mage movement makes it so that you can cast spells without slowing down you can cast it and run around the place divine wolves this is just something that I pulled out of thin air and decided oh that looks cool just makes wolves more interesting um, yeah it's just makes wolves more interesting Makes it so that you can... There's more types of wolves. They, they have a cooler sound. They have different AI. They'll flank you. Um, at low levels, even around Riverwood, I was getting destroyed by wolves because they would come around me and flank around me on either side and uh, they'd kill me in two hits. And I wasn't even on super hard or anything. I don't play it on uh, brutal difficulties. Uh, know your enemy. So this is know your enemy all in one. This one does... It's actually three different mods, all in one. Uh, there's trait-based uh, trait resistances and weaknesses. 
So this is the one that has, like, say, a Draugr. A Draugr is weak against maces because it will break its bones and things like that, but it's strong against swords because swords to a, a, an undead corpse, basically, they're just going to chop into flesh that's already dead. They're not going to do much. Swords are sort of like, yeah, they'll deal damage, but you're not, you're not going to kill it as anywhere near as easily as you would with a mace because a mace will break its bones. And while it might still be shambling around, you'll do a lot more damage with just brute force rather than trying to chop things. Um, same goes, it's, it's, they're strong against cold magic, so Draugr are strong against cold magic, but they're weak against fire because fire will sort of char their corpse, I guess. Whereas Frost, they're living, they're, they're undead for one, so they're as cold as the grave, and they live in a frozen wasteland, effectively, underground. They're, they're very cold as it is. Cold magic is sort of like, yeah, they're what. Um, that's just one little example. It overhauls all the enemies in the game, overhauls all the armor, all weapons, makes it so they have this very paper, scissors, rock sort of style to them. Some things are very weak against certain things, very strong against others, uh, different armor types as well. You can use a mace. If you use a mace type weapon on a... Uh, and this works with that heavy armory mod too. So if I use a, a mace or a maul or a, a club on an iron chess piece, it's going to do more damage than a sword will because a sword will sort of clang against an iron plate and kind of almost bounce off. It'll still deal, deal a little bit of damage, but nowhere near as much. Whereas a mace will kind of cave it in, it'll dent it, it'll cause damage internally. Whereas leather... Things like leather and, and layers of fur and that sort of stuff. If you hit it with a mace, it can sort of absorb some of the shock, some of the impact. Whereas a sword will be able to stab clean through it. It'll just, it'll mess someone up that's wearing that type of thing. So it's a really cool mod. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of patches for it as well. So this one makes uh, Know Your Enemy, which is KYE. Uh, know Your Enemy all in one. MLU and Fatality all work together. Um... Make sure that you know, because know your enemy, that that's the trait-based resistances. The armor plugin is the one that does the armor. And then there's a silver perk that makes silver work against ghosts and stuff. But basically, it's um, it's know your enemy all in one. You can get the other know your enemy mods that you can see listed there. Make sure that you get this one if you're going to go down this path. Because there are different patches for it. Because the, the other patches are, you can see the little thumbnail there in the bottom here. Where it's got KYE AIO. It's for Know Your Enemy All-in-One. Whereas there are other ones that are just KYE. So it will it won't have the All-in-One, so it won't have the armor and the silver perk there. Um, if you spend a bit of time with it, if you are interested in going down this path, just, yeah, click through it. Just take a bit of time. Um, that, that one makes it work with Divine Wolves. And it says, as you can see there, Divine Wolves, Divine Wolves All-in-One, oh, KYE All-in-One, KYE All-in-One, and the Fatality patch, and then this patch. So even though this has MLU in it as well, I know it's after the Fatality patch. So you kind of have to guess certain things here and there. Um, yeah, that, that one makes it work with Cutting Room Floor. It doesn't necessarily say that it's above or below the Fatality one, but I figured I'd put it under it anyway. And it seems to work. Um, immersive Ingestibles, this is just my food mod. I probably could have put this further up the list. I'm not really too phased. It's fine. It's not causing a problem. A lot of mods you'll find, they don't, it doesn't matter where they are in the list. It's just, they have to be pretty self-contained. And this one just changes the stats on food. That's all it does. Makes it so that instead of, you know, eating a, a beef stew and getting 10 health back, like it's a potion... You can eat a beef stew and you'll get 25 carry weight and 25 fortify health for an hour. So it makes it more like a like a, an MMO food, I guess. Um, make cooking worth it. Rather than just eating 50 apples. Now this one... This one's called Get Immersive Cheats. Uh, the get is for um, game enhancement... Hold on, what is it? Oh, game environment tweaks. So it says immersive cheats because the person that made the mod considers these cheats. I don't, really. Um, I find them more sort of quality of life improvements. It doesn't give you infinite money or anything like that. It makes things like, um, you know, you can break 
You can break a, a mammoth skull. You can go up to a mammoth skull and interact with it. And if it says it's got a good horn on it, you can attack the skull, deal some damage to it with a weapon or a spell, and break a, horn, a tusk off. Because why wouldn't you be able to do that? If there's a mammoth tusk there, and you can sell mammoth tusks, why wouldn't you be able to find a mammoth skull and break a tusk off it? Seems pretty logical. Um, things like combat dummies and archery targets, you can improve your skills. They only go up so far. But if you really want to spend your time standing in front of a dummy and practicing on that it does it very slowly but they do give you a little bit of skill if you mess around with them um things like the magic candle at candle hearth that's supposed to be an everlasting candle that's never gone out um why well, you can go up and you can interact with it and it'll, it'll make your torch have that flame as well kind of like the olympic torch almost um more enchanting and alchemy tables so more shops will have enchanting and alchemy tables in them just again it's just quality of life you can go to the alchemy table at the pub or the inn down the road that you're already in for whatever reason. Or you can walk out the door through a load screen and then walk in the door to the alchemy place through another load screen and then use the alchemy table. Um, you can go into a blacksmith's and they might have an enchanting table there. So you can disenchant things and or enchant something or whatever. It just adds more access to those things without it being too prevalent. You don't want it to be everywhere. And, and like wood piles. Wood piles you can actually get wood from. You can interact with wood piles. You get, get free firewood out of them. Because they're, they're a wood pile. Of course you'd be able to get wood out of them. And bugs. Bugs and little ingredients and things like that you can find in them as well. Different alchemy ingredients. Little bits and pieces. You're not going to find a Daedra heart or anything in there. Or a saber cat eye. But you'll find, you know, just little bugs and little leaves and random bits and pieces that you'd expect to find in a wood pile. Anyway... It's a lot more other bits and pieces as well. It's just... Yeah. It's... It just adds quality of life stuff. It's called, it's called immersive cheats, but it's... It's just quality of life stuff as far as I'm concerned. Better pelt prices makes all pelts worth more. Um, it just does. It just makes them worth more. Except for the ones that are added by Divine Wolves. Divine Wolves add some more wolf pelts and they're still horrible. They're worth 12 gold or whatever and you can't even turn them into leather, but you learn to you learn which ones they are and you just sell them straight away. Additional music. It's a music mod. Adds a lot of music to the game. Um, mixes it in with the, the normal stuff. Just adds more music to the world. Why not? Realistic waterfall sounds. Makes your waterfall sound really full on and exciting and loud uh, realistic grass field there's a few different versions of this I have the one that is different colors as you go to different regions you can get an all green one uh, you can get a dark one I like it I like the grass this is kind of necessary as well uh, because of one of the other mods that I've got um, there's a couple of mods that I've got further down the list towards the end of the list that make it so that you have um, increased frame rate uh, it turns certain things off in the game so you have it's less likely for your game to sort of overload and crash because half your crashes will be because the game's trying to do too many different things at once and then your Xbox will just quit out of the game completely I've actually in my testing of all these mods I've had my Xbox completely turn off um, more than once to the point that I have to actually unplug it from the wall and plug it back in because it won't turn back on it's just tripped it just, sorry I'm not an Xbox anymore I'm a brick so you have to unplug it and give it a minute and then plug it back in and then it'll come back to life. Um, yeah, so it can it can get pretty bad if you're not careful. But try not to do that too often. Um, but yeah, grass field, pretty important. Disable snow grass because snow grass looks horrible. Generally, in towns most of the time. Just deletes it. Um, doesn't touch the frozen marshes. Just makes a lot of the stuff in towns and stuff just very... Um, a lot smoother. Makes the game not have to load as much stuff. And with some of the other things that I've got in here, they dress the world up far more than... You won't miss the grass. You won't miss the snow grass. Because this sort of grass is all over the place anyway. And the snow grass look like garbage. And the pebbles that are all over the place, you don't need them. Your game's trying to load all these pebbles and all these bits of grass in and you just, you don't need them. Um, 
clean up the world. Some of the things that you'll do to clean up the world will actually make it run smoother. Uh, landscape fixes for grass mods. Just makes it so that your grass from this grass mod doesn't grow through everything. Because it doesn't necessarily recognize that that's a well. So it'll grow through the concrete of the well. Um, but yeah, makes it so that the grass reads the world a bit better. Tavern idols. This is because sometimes in your tavern you'll have a lot of NPCs that will go in there from different mods or whatever. And um, basically you'll you'll want to have more things for them to do. Otherwise they all stand around at the door going, ah, there's no chairs for me. I'll just stand here. And then they crowd around the door and it looks really weird. More tavern idols just makes it so that they can interact, they can lean on posts, or they can crouch down and warm their hands at the fire, or they can dance, or that sort of thing. All the things you normally expect, just more of them. More more places for NPCs to go, oh, I can do that, rather than just standing in the corner. Uh, XP32, Maximum Skeleton, and Realistic Ragdoll and Force. Um, some people have said not to use this. I... Don't really have a problem with it. I'm pretty sure this is the one that makes it so that... Um, I can't move bodies. Bodies are very, very heavy. Corpses are very, very heavy. Uh, there, there are ways for me to move them. If you get the right spells and stuff. But bodies are very, very heavy to move. And it's just... It's just cool. Things ragdoll, things fall down and die. Instead of doing weird animations and stuff. Belt fast and quivers. Just looks good with the backpacks and the capes. Instead of having them in their normal vanilla spot, puts them sort of across your hips. Uh, this is a patch to make XP32 and belt fast and quivers work together. Again, patches, patches, patches. Patches are super important. It looks like 150 mods. It's not. It's more like 75 and 75 patches. Realistic death physics, so they don't do the weird spin animation when they die. Realistic impacts, so when dragons hit the ground or you know, giants slam the ground and that sort of thing, you'll actually have a bit of a stagger. You know, it's it's a heavy impact. It's shaking the world a bit. Uh, cloaks of the Nords makes it so that you have some cloaks from the other cloaks mod. Um, it changes some of the textures on them. So you can kind of treat it as a patch. It's a big patch. 172 meg, but it just makes them more ornate. Um, makes some of the cloaks just look really nice. Compared to the plain old cloaks. Uh, light guard armor overhaul. So this changes the guard armor in every town. Uh, except Windhelm. Um, gives Balgraf new armor. All the guard armors are all different. So you they make sense to where they are. So like your white run guards look more like cavalry armor. Because white run's all about horses. Apparently. Um, Markarth. Because there's some Dwemer ruins there. They have easy access to Dwemer metals. So the Markarth guard armor... Looks heavily influenced by, you know, a Dwemer blacksmith. It doesn't look like Dwemer armor. Just looks like they used Dwemer metal to make guard armor. Um, you know, different places have different types of armor. It looks different. You know, kind of where you are by just looking at the guards. And all their shields are different. It's 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 nice. Adds adds a lot of new stuff to the game that isn't just plain old, you know, different colored sets of the same armor. Civil Roller Armor Overhaul, so this changes all the armor for all of uh, the Imperials and all the Dawnguard. Um, just makes it cool. Makes makes a lot more stuff. It changes uh, Windhelm, so this, this particular set changes the Windhelm Guards as well. Um, and you can craft it if you get into the Civil War and start learning things. Truly unique weapons, so this makes all of your unique weapons in the world actually unique. Or most of the unique weapons in the world actually unique. So, rather than just being, you know, the same old sword that looks like it's enchanted and might be a slightly different colour. And says, this is the God Slayer. And it's just a plain old sword. It actually looks cool. So a lot of these weapons, a lot of these sort of unique weapons look different to like they're their own thing they're unique they're special dust effects just makes dust look less shit plain and easy uh, enhanced night skyrim makes my night sky uh, sky look even more amazing than it normally does 
Color patches remover. Super important. Super important. Um, should put it here. So these are all, keep in mind, most of these. I mean, we sort of blur the line here, but these are pretty much all texture mods. So that adds new textures to some of the cloaks. This adds new textures to the guard armor. It does rename them a little bit and stuff as well, but it's not a big deal. Um, that one kind of overhauls things, but it's, it is pretty texture based because it's, it's self-contained to the Imperials and the Stormcloaks. So it, the other things in the world don't really affect it too much. Um, this one's just textures and models. So it doesn't add new weapons or anything like that. It just makes your weapons look different. Makes the dust look different. Makes the night sky look different. Um, color patches remover is still kind of a texture mod. To my knowledge. Because it makes something that has a texture of bright orange mark on the ground where the world shouldn't exist. Changes that texture to invisible. So. It is what it is. A lot of these mods have more of an explanation in them. If you do want to sort of dig into them. This says to put it as low in your load order as possible. I put it up here for reasons I do not remember. But again, I tested this for over a month. I'm very tired, so I can't remember a lot of the specifics. And it's... Um, it works. It works where it is. Talkative dragons. Makes dragons talk. Horse camera. Changes... Well, horse camera tweak. Tweaks your horse camera when you're riding on horseback. So it's off to the side instead of right behind you. Convenient horses. That's the mod uh, that has a lot of overhauls to horses. You can read them there. Mounted awesomeness. Interact with people. Interact with corpses. Harvest ingredients. You've got a horse charge when combat. You can name it. You can stable it. You can quick swap different horses. Uh, encumbrance. Mobile storage. Dialogue whistle calling the magical horn that summons it just out of the blue um yeah lots of cool stuff makes horses more way more interesting beauty of skyrim so this one changes faces and hair and this is actually a combination of a few different mods but it's eye colors um a lot of this is sort of your character creation but it also the npcs use them so um, makes makes NPCs look nicer like their features look nicer divine skins and bodies this is the skin texture mesh thing makes your texture like your skins for characters look nicer makes their underwear look less homeless um, yeah just just nice um, uh, variety of hair colors so just adds more hair colors for your character. Not for random NPCs, but for your character. You can change your hair color and pick something different. Not a necessity. Just thought it was a cool thing to have a character with a different hair color. Now that we're through all the texture mods and body mods and stuff. Um, and again, Convenient Horses kind of stands out there, but it is... You could have put it further up the list, but I've got it here with the other horse mod. Lighting. Enhanced lighting effects. Overhauls lighting. In a lot of different ways. Lighting mods are generally... Uh, they generally have an issue with weather mods. So you've got to have lighting and weather mods that work together. Again, normally it's with a patch. Sometimes you don't need a patch. As long as they are made to work together. Some mods you'll read to be... This works with such and such. This works with such and such. Uh, no player homes. Um, and then there's patches for enhanced lighting effects. There's a few different lighting mods. This is one one that I like because of what it offers. Uh, no player homes, so you don't get weird lighting in player homes if you've got player home mods. Um, enhanced lighting effects hardcore. So this is the one that makes dungeons darker. Um, darker fog. Darker distances. Just sort of darken Skyrim pretty pretty solidly. Uh, it removes light and ambient color from all dungeons not inhabited by humans. So that's the dungeons, like puts out the candles basically. Um, and darkened interiors. Makes it makes it darker in general, but doesn't make the world, the entire world dark. Like you're not sitting there going, oh, I need to turn up my brightness because I can't see. 
It just makes dark places that are supposed to be dark darker. No fake light under doors. Um, just a mod that makes the not have any fake light under doors. So underneath your doors when you walk in and out of buildings and stuff, there'll be light shining underneath it, which doesn't make complete sense all the time. So I turn it off. This is the weather mod that I use, or one of the weather mods that I use. Um, it overhauls the lighting and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, it's... It says it's absolutely not compatible with other weather mods, which is fine, except True Storms, which True Storms is currently not compatible with other weather mods. But then there's a patch that makes Mythical Ages and True Storms both work together. And it's got the load order of how you put them in there and everything like that. Um, there's a couple of different patches for this as well. So you can pick like a darky, dark sort of dusky one or like a more of a blue one. Because it takes more from one mod or the other. Just read through your patches. Make sure that your patches are what you want. Make sure they do what you want them to do. Um, okay, and then... Now we're getting into, like, world alterations. So, like, um, area changes and things like that. Unique bridges. Just changes the bridges in the world to make more sense. So they're not just all the plain stone bridges all the same across everywhere. They're different depending on where they are. Like Riverwood. Riverwood has a really nice little bridge across the river because it's a logging town and it's a wooden bridge, so it makes sense. Um, bridges down near Markarth are Dwemer because if there's Dwemer ruins everywhere else, why wouldn't there be Dwemer ruins over a river? Um, point the way, signposts, just plops them in the world. So this just changes like little things around the world, little spots. Um, changes signposts, makes signposts make more sense. Same with the bridges. They just add, plop little things in the world, change little spots. Um, this changes interiors, so changes the inside of um, War Maidens in Whiterun, and then this is an ELFX patch for War Maidens in Whiterun. Now I've focused a lot of my mods around Whiterun and Falkreath, just because that's where I'm starting and I've sort of built from there. Um, so the further you get away from Whiterun and Falkreath, the less my mods affect the world, but these are pretty intensive around that area and they work fine. Um, this changes the interior of War Maidens, interior of Arcadia's Cauldron, uh, Bellathor's General Goods, Drunken Huntsman. Um, this is the home, so Mammoth Manor. This is my house at the moment. Uh, Hearthfire's unique display room, so this is a display room that is in the basement of my Hearthfire house, so it extends that basement out to be bigger and better and has specific spots for a lot of Daedric artifacts and dragon masks and uh, priest masks and... and um, Elder Scrolls, things like that. All the claws has has special spots for all the claws. Um, it's just a trophy room, just like a collectible, you know. Uh, Oakwood, Oakwood adds a new village to the world that works with a lot of other like radiant quests and things like that. Um, the fall of Granite Hill. I haven't really gone to Granite Hill much. They're just made by. The same person, you can see in the top left hand corner of the the thumbnail there, it's made by Arthmore. Well, you might not be able to read that, but it's made by Arthmore, who's a pretty well trusted mod author. Immersive College of Winterhold NPCs, just adds more NPCs to the College of Winterhold. Because it's a college that should have more than two and a half students. Um, yeah, adds, adds NPCs. Some of them are followers, some of them are teachers some of them do stuff some of them you know move around the world it is what it is this one skyrim revisited all in one or aio this is the one that revamps um uh, those dungeons um that are sort of your story based dungeons so it revamps bleak falls barrow ustengrav embershard mine steepfall burrow Halted Stream Camp and White River Watch. They're not all story-based, but they're all pretty popular dungeons. They're all pretty well-known dungeons. And it makes them far more complex. Um, Crisscrossing pathways, loops, um, you'll get lost. Especially with, you know, all the enemy changes and things like that. You, you'll get lost. I got lost in Bleak Falls Barrow for two hours this afternoon. And I had already run it once. Uh, with this modern 
I ran it again and I still got lost. Horribly, horribly lost. JK Skyrim all in one. This one overhauls towns. Makes towns cooler. Just makes them cooler. Plain and simple. Adds a lot more in the way of decoration. Adds, makes them sort of, it expands things. It adds more buildings, adds more NPCs if it has to. Changes things around. It, this affects a lot of towns and cities. Um, your five major cities, Whiterun, uh, Windhelm, Solitude, Markarth, Riften, Riverwood, Dragonbridge, Iverstead, Rorikstead, Falkreath, Morthol, Dawnstar, Winterhold, the Skull Village in um, Solstheim, and Skyhaven Temple as well. Okay, so JK Skyrim overhauls a lot of towns, that sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of patches for it. JK's, JK's Skyrim is really nice in the sense that it they list a lot of their patches. Not every single one of them, um, but they list all the ones that they sort of know of or approve of. Yeah, it just... It's cool. It's handy. Um, and these, these sorts of mods are because they're so well documented they they taught me a lot these kinds of mods not just jk's but these kinds of mods that sort of go okay well this is why this is compatible this is why this is not compatible um uh, you know this is this is a problem with this one this is this is why this one's good this is why this one's bad uh, stuff like that like it, it breaks things down more than just saying oh this doesn't work it's not good with that don't do, don't touch that uh, landscape mods this is a patch for the grass patch so the landscape fixes for grass mods that changed my grass to not grow through the well um, this is a patch for that for this new town these new town overhauls so the town overhauls obviously change where grass would normally grow the landscape fixes doesn't know that so this patch makes the grass mod the grass fix mod obey the new towns JK Skyrim cutting room floor makes cutting room floors work better. Uh, so that patch it makes basically makes those two work. Uh, JK Skyrim Oblivion Gates makes the Oblivion Gates, um, which is coming up a little bit later. Oblivion Gates in Cities is really good. Um, but yeah, this, this is a patch so that you get Oblivion Gates in Cities because there's a mod here, which makes cities have oblivion gates in them you don't can't go through them you can't you know summon a portal and go through oblivion and fight data or anything but if you played oblivion if you played elder scrolls 4 you'll know that there were oblivion gates all over the world um this puts some of the ruins of those gates around the place because in oblivion once you defeat it it stays there it's a it's it's a ruin basically i'm pretty sure might not have been all of them but there was quite a few of them um but yeah, because there's a town overhaul, you need to have patches for that new town overhaul to work with other things that change the world. So cutting room floor that adds new towns, buildings, NPCs. Not towns, but well, anyway, changes the world. Um, JK Skyrim needs to work with the Oblivion Gates as well. And this one, you'll see this patch, it says here in the load order, you load JK Skyrim, then the patch, then Oblivion Gates in cities. So occasionally, very rarely, you load the patch first. That's why you got to read it, double check it all the time. Bells of Skyrim um, adds bells to cities. People panic when the bell rings. They run inside buildings. So if you're getting attacked by a dragon or you vampires or whatever, or you, if you decide to lose it and start murdering everybody, the guards will ring the bell. All the normal NPCs will panic and run inside whatever is the nearest building, usually. Uh, and all the guards will go to high alert, so they'll draw their weapons, they'll have their shields ready to go, um, looking for a fight, basically. Bells of Skyrim has a patch to work with JK Skyrim, so that the, the town overhauls can fit the bell towers in them, and recognise that. If you don't have some of these patches with JK Skyrim, your game will crash. It will not load. You won't get into it. 
because it'll try and load these things and there'll be overlap. So it'll try and load a bell tower inside where there's, you know, wall or guard barracks or, you know, something that shouldn't exist. And both of those things will go, and then it'll crash a game. Dark Swipe Run Market. It is a market outside of White Run. Pretty simple. Adds a tavern. Adds three or four market stalls. Some little shops. They don't have tons of money. They just sell a few bits and pieces. Um, it's just a cool little market. It's a cool little tavern. The light flickers on the front of the tavern. Can't fix it. Not a big deal. Just look past it. Skyrim's pretty broken normally. This isn't game breaking. It's one lantern that flickers occasionally. Um... There's a patch for this. So there's the cutting room floor patch is one thing. So make sure you get this. But there's also a patch for Dark's White Run Market for JK Skyrim. Um, the JK Skyrim patch is not necessary. Because JK Skyrim... And I should say it down here somewhere. Uh, Capital White Run Expansion, Provincial Courier Service, Most of Citizens White Run Gates, Walls Restored, um, see it says uh, these are a few patches I'll try to upload JK's will be next you don't need it JK's uh, or Dark's White Run Market one of them I can't remember I read it on the actual website uh, on, on the Bethesda Net website there's more details and it basically says on there hey this mod is now we moved because it, it was only like a barrel or a horse and cart or something that was clashing like two things were in the same place one of the mods went, oh yeah, I'll just delete that one barrel. Or I'll just delete that one cart. And then your mod will work fine. You don't need a patch. So you don't need the JK's patch. I've tested it. I've looked at it. Unless something has suddenly changed by the time you're reading and watching and installing this. Um, you don't necessarily need it. But double check it anyway. If you're watching this six months down the track, something might have changed. Any, All of this might have changed. You need to... You need to make sure that things are going to work the way you want them to. Great City of Solitude. This only affects the outside of Solitude, whereas JK Skyrim affects everything within, like inside the gates. This changes the docks. So this is the exterior area, exterior area surrounding Solitude docks. Um, yeah, it's an outside one. It needs to be placed low in the load order. I put it after JK Skyrim, so hopefully it wouldn't mess with anything. It has a patch here for the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. So, make sure you get the patch. Missives. This is the bounty board. Pretty plain and simple. Uh, Divine Forests. This one adds extra trees and extra bushes and bits and pieces and new wildlife, flowers, insects, etc, etc, etc. It's just... It adds more forests to the world. That's, it it just makes things more foresty. Yeah. It also mentions there the logical load order, minor, uh, minor multiple area edits. If you want to look into a load order yourself and build from it, it's not, um, it's not foolproof. There are obviously certain mods that need to be shuffled and moved around, but the logical load order is pretty good. It's pretty good to start from. If you have all your mods and you shuffle them into those things, because uh, that's specific categories. If you just search logical load order or Skyrim logical load order, you should be able to find it. It's a document online. You can build from that, use that as a starting block, and then shuffle your mods around as you learn more about them. Um, ESO Sky Shards, it's another way to get perk points. It is this far down the list because it adds so many little Sky Shards to the world. Um, basically, you find three Sky Shards like you do in ESO, you get a perk point. Simple. Dragon Souls to perk points. So again, you can get more perk points this way. You can turn a Dragon Soul into perk points. You can set it. So uh, by default, it's five Dragon Souls for one perk point. But you can change it to one or three or seven or ten or whatever. Uh, and you find you have to actually get the spell from High Hrothgar. So you can't just have the spell before you know dragons exist because they won't let you into High Hrothgar. Uh, immersive Patrols. Adds more people to the world. Adds more roving, patrolling merchants, not just the Khajiit, actual other random merchants that walk around the world. And they'll go in when, instead of camping outside a city, they'll actually go into a tavern at night. Um, you know, they've got bodyguards and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it also adds 
more sort of Stormcloak and Imperial patrols to the world. Adds um, more Thalmor. It adds Dawnguard um, patrols after you start Dawnguard, not just randomly. Just adds more NPCs to the roads. It's cool. I like it. It's not not too not too much, um, and it's it's law friendly. Uh, Spectraverse. A quest mod that I haven't tested fully because I didn't play through all of it because I didn't want to play all the way through a quest mod and then be like, this is a good quest mod that works and then put it in my game that I was going to play because I would have beaten it. But from what I've tested so far, it's pretty good. Go into it with... Like, go into it prepared and make sure that you save before you do any particular part of it. Save often because there are certain points where I got stuck because I fell between... Uh, you know, a set of scaffolding in the wall. I couldn't get out. Um, or I had to move a body. And I had to move a body from point A to point B. But because of the other mods, I can't pick up corpses. So I need a telekinesis mod. Or a great telekinesis mod. Uh, not mod, spell. I need a, a telekinesis spell to be able to pick up a body and move it over to the spot. Because I can't pick up bodies and move them normally. And it's just like, pick up the body and move it. And you can't. So you got to use a telekinesis spell to do the same thing. Uh, Moon of Star adds a little town out in the water um, in Lake Illinalta. Uh, it's a dark elf town, really well voiced. Side quests seem pretty cool. Uh, it's it works for radiant quests and stuff, so you'll have you know random things happen there. The missives mod, the the bounty board that's a, a bit further up, works really well with it too because missives are. Um, generally radiant missions so you might go to a bounty board and get a a missive that'll say oh deliver a letter to little vivek which is the name of the town that's added in this one um even though it's a mod town so it's a mod working with a mod they work together or i might say deliver this to oakwood or deliver this to wherever and moonstar also adds uh, a quest and a, a set of stuff um, which I haven't unlocked yet because you have to be the Dragonborn first. You just go to the town normally and it's just people that are like, hey, you're cool, I like you, let's hang out. And they have little side quests and stuff, but until you're the Dragonborn, you don't actually unlock the quest line for it. The big thing. Um, that's an immersion patch. Basically, it means that if I go into the town before I've actually unlocked the quest, they don't call me Dragonborn, which is good. Easy Riders Dungeon Pack. It's a dungeon pack. Adds cool dungeons. Heard very good things about it. Haven't tested any of them, but it only adds seven, and I've heard very good things about it. Skyrim Sewers. Adds sewers underneath a bunch of towns, a couple of forts. It's interesting. It's exciting. Sewers are exciting. Why not? Skyrim is windy, so... This makes all your grass and bushes and stuff blow in the wind, um, which is going to be important later. We're nearly at the end of the list. Lucian is a follower. Lucian is very well voiced and interacts with a lot of things. He has a lot of things to talk about. He's very cool. You can teach him stuff. He has a moon and star patch, so he interacts with that mod as well. So patches, patches, patches again. Uh, alternate start. Because it's just a cool way to start the game whenever you want to start something different. New Beginnings gives you extra alternate starts for alternate starts. So it's like a patch to alternate start. Run for your lives makes people freak out and run away when dragons come. So it's kind of combined with the bells. So it's good for you, like your little villages and stuff. Relationship dialogue overhaul. Just overhauls dialogue. Um, relationship dialogue overhaul and cutting room floor and... The unofficial special edition patch, Skyrim special edition patch, makes this RDO work with the other two mods we've got further up. Realistic conversations, changes conversations a bit, works with RDO. Serana dialogue add-on, so it makes her better. She says a lot more, she interacts a lot more. It's actually recorded by a new voice actress that tried to imitate the original voice actress um, to line things up a bit um, and adds... Quite a large number of lines. Inigo. Inigo is the Khajiit. Um, he has like 4,000 lines or something. He's amazing. Oh, 7,000 lines, sorry. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Very, very cool mod. A very, very cool follower. Skyland All-in-One. It's a texture pack. 
It overhauls textures. It makes textures good. Um, it actually, installing this will make your game run smoother than vanilla textures. Because these are optimized. Whereas the original Skyrim textures are not optimized. Because they're just... Oh, not, not all of them anyway. Um, they're just sort of upscaled and, and shifted over to this Skyrim and just sort of slapped in. And it's like, yeah, that'll work. Whereas these ones are not a port. They're custom made for a two run in Special Edition. Skyland all in one. Patch. So it's a patch for that one. Just changes some of the little textures that need fixing. Roads and stuff like that. Updated mine markers just makes your mine say this is a silver mine or this is an iron mine or this is a whatever. A quality world map just makes your map look better. Pastel map markers makes your map markers look better. And then the last one is FPS Eternal. So FPS Eternal does two main things. It does do a few other things as well, but two main things. One is uh, no wind. Um, so it stops your trees from blowing in the wind. It stops a lot of your vanilla wind stuff, it just stops them. So you don't lose frames from tree branches trying to blow around. Um, especially with the forest mods and all that sort of thing, you don't want a ton of wind blowing through your trees because it'll, it'll lag your game pretty bad and it can cause crashes depending on where you are and how much you've got going on. Um, immersive forests uh, makes it so that there's certain trees that were usually high, high detail and, and were pretty heavy in load and turns them into dead trees. You're not going to miss them. It's just the occasional dead tree around the place. You're like, oh, that's a different tree. Cool. Uh, and then FPS Overload, which I believe FPS Overload... I haven't looked too much into that one, but I believe FPS Overload is what makes it so that if you go into towns, like walled-off towns, like Whiterun or Solitude, Windhelm, that sort of thing, it'll drop your draw distance. So you won't be able to see, like, distant mountains and stuff that are really far away. Um... It makes it so that it doesn't it doesn't add that weight to your game. It sort of cuts it back a little bit so you can do more with the towns. And that's why these JK town mods work a lot better because you're compromising. You're giving something up to have a better experience in one thing. And you you honestly you don't see you don't see the difference. Um a good friend of mine worded it in a pretty good way and it was because when we were talking about the piles of um, firewood, we had a choice to have interactable firewood or really good looking firewood. And it was, um, would you rather have a pile of firewood that looks photorealistic and you can see the ants crawling on it and you go, wow, that firewood looks really good and then never really look at it in detail ever again for your entire playthrough or have firewood that looks good, looks fine. It's definitely firewood. It doesn't look dumb. It doesn't look bad. And you can interact with it and get alchemy ingredients and, you know, actual firewood chunks and stuff for the rest of the game. Something that you can play, something that you can interact with more. You won't miss seeing the mountains off in the distance, unless that's really your thing. You really won't miss it. Um, because if you're in a town, usually you're worrying about what's going on in the town. Um, but yeah, that's the mod list. That's a very long explanation for the mod list, but it's been cut down pretty well. Um, That's it for now. So I'll cut this down and move it later. And I can trim it all out. <sighs> I don't know if anyone's still there because my phone has gone flat. Um, but um, I think that's going to be me. I think I'm going to go and have some dinner. And I think I might watch a little bit of YouTube or a little bit of Netflix or something. And then I'm going to go to sleep. But I'm going to be on tomorrow. So I will see whoever is here then. <laughs>